question is, should we keep being global? Right now, Bush is presenting to Congress an international trade agreement with Colombia that they want to sign. And the question is, should we stay global or do we need to protect our jobs from foreign competition? That is the question, to protect or not. The idea of free trade versus protectionism has been along, around for a long time. Realize free trade helps lower prices to the consumer, usually offers better quality products, more choices for consumers, and with free trade you also have the transmission of international ideas and technology. With protectionism, you have to worry about piracy of ideas. Patent law does not protect in the international market. So there's no protection for new research and development. Realize the U.S. has the highest wage rates in the world. And one reason to protect our jobs is to get that wage rate and our currency and our living. Also, by having protectionism, we also protect, um, attract capital into the United States marketplace. Have their factories built here, like we have Honda and Toyota factories in the U.S. One reason is because of our protectionism in the car industry. And the last reason is, of course, do we want to be dependent on farm producers like we are dependent on OPEC or oil. Realize that they can transfer wealth at any time if we become dependent upon them and prey upon our economy. So the idea of free trade is the idea of either absolute or comparative advantage. You want to go with absolute advantage, we should only produce those goods from our resources that we can produce most is output for the same amount of input. So when you analyze absolute advantage, which you want to do in project four, you're looking at, okay, this is how much I can produce. Do I produce more than the other country or than the other state? If you do not have an output, you cannot determine absolute advantage. Then another way to look at free trade is to say, okay, countries should produce what they have, lowest opportunity co cost in producing a good, or the highest opportunity yield. So let's compare the US and Japan with zeros and black machines. We're going to look at comparative advantage and analyze comparative advantage. What we look at is US protection of stereos. We look at producing that versus fax machines. US has a comparative advantage of 1.15 versus Japan, theirs is 0.86. Remember, when we're looking at cost, the country with the lowest cost has the advantage. So of course, Japan has the advantage of stereos. We looked at fax machines. U.S., we look at the ratio, is at 0.8. Japan is at 1.16. So here, U.S. has the advantage in fax machines. Remember, when we look at cost, and if it's a dollar equals one yen, the lowest cost has the advantage. So, why? At these prices, would Japan buy fax machines from the U.S., even though we have a comparative advantage in producing them? They would have to pay 80 yen for the same fax machine that they could get for 70 yen. So what would have to change in the international market is the exchange rate. So how do you figure out how much the exchange rate would have to change by? So let's look at first the exchange rate on stereos. $90 would have to equal 60 yen, or $1.15 would have to equal 1 yen. If we're looking at fax machines, $80 would have to equal 70 yen, or $1.14 equals 1 yen. 1 yen would buy $1.14. If that's the case, Japan would buy fax machines from the U.S. However, we don't want the U.S. to stop buying stereos from Japan, so we don't want the exchange rate to get any more than 1 yen buying $1.5. So again, the dollar is getting weaker, Japanese stronger and that's why we can trade. So, do we want to do that? Or do we want to protect our current standard of living and use protectionism and not sign our trade agreement? That is the question. So why is it so important? Why is it so important to save US jobs? Well if you look at the data from the World Bank and you see on here you see China, who's, we look at income per person, and I'm looking at them compared to how big their country is. I have India, this is Japan, this is 
the United Kingdom. And the U.S. isn't on here yet, but the U.S. will show up and they're going to be a, and here's the U.S. right here. Look at just in 1961, how much our income per person is higher than the other countries. However, if you look over time, we come all the way up to 2005. The United States is still outstripping income per person, but China's getting up there, Russia's getting up there, but still our income per person compared to the other countries, much, much higher. China's getting there, right? Slowly getting there. India's getting there. But still, look how further behind their income per person here. This is our income per person, 81, there's 133, Russia. India, United Kingdom, and Japan's kind of keeping up with us. And then we look at, besides this, we look at our international trade. Again, here's the United States, United Kingdom, I'm going to have Japan, all the other countries will show up. This is as of 1970, I don't have data from there. We look at our international trade balance and how much we are exporting versus importing. If we import more than exports, we are going to go to negative down here. Notice right now, 1970, we're even. Pretty much like Italy, like the United Kingdom, this is us, the United States. But look at what's happened up to 2006. I think I get to 2006. World Bank data. Oh my gosh. <coughs> As of 2006, we are not buying. And no one is buying from us. We are buying from the international market. Look what's happening with China. China's international trade balance has gone way up. So the question is, even if we do want to export, will anybody buy from us? So what prevents us from becoming a protectionist country? I mean, they're not buying from us. And if we stop buying from them, maybe we will produce more jobs here. So your question is, to protect or not? Do you believe in free trade? Should we keep outsourcing all these U.S. jobs? Or should we try to get the U.S. trade balance back to where it should be? Notice Japan. Japan's now in the positive. We look at the United Kingdom. You mean United Kingdom has gone a little bit negative, but not even close to us. Russia, positive trade balance. Germany, very positive trade balance. What should be done? I leave it up to you.